Good morning, North Toronto. Hi, Sean Chapnick. Okay, I would like to welcome you all to, is this the first NT Talks of the year? I think it is. So second NT Talks, the second NT Talks of the year. Uh, I've been asked to introduce our guest today by the name of Ryan Hines. Uh, Ryan was born in Georgetown, Guyana, but was raised in the city of Toronto. He attended North Toronto Collegiate from 1999 to 2002, where he won two city uh, football championships and a city basketball championship, scoring 37 points in the final game. After completing his career at NT, he moved on to the University of New Hampshire, playing for the Wildcats in football and completing a pre-med biology degree. After that, he was selected 13th uh, overall in the second round of the CFL draft and currently plays for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Ooh. Uh, that's okay. We, we will forgive him about that. No problems. Uh, Ryan is currently, he's played in the CFL now for three years and over 41 games. Um, and outside of the football field is what I really want to talk about, and I think what Ryan's going to touch on a bit today as well. Uh, he is a strong believer in giving back to the community. He sits on the board of directors for GTA Youth Athletics. In addition, he works with Guyana Help the Kids, an organization focused on opening a, a new pedi- pediatric ward in Guyana. So uh, with... Can we give a round of applause, please, for Mr. Ryan Hines? Uh, Mr. Hood, you're really, really tall. I feel already really short. I'm going to take this out and walk around. How are you guys doing this morning? Good? All right. Now, uh, first of all, I'm going to say it's a really tough time slot, Monday morning at 9 a.m., to try to get the attention of uh, some grade 12 kids. I know I'd be, uh, when I was in high school, I'd probably be in the back trying to uh, stay awake, I know. Um, but, all right, so uh, Ryan Hines, I play in the CFL. Um, and so what I'm here to talk to you guys today about is my career and what I do. Um, but what I really want to focus on is the path that I took to get to where I am today. I mean, I can tell you that I play in the CFL and it's a lot of fun. You know, I have a blast going out um, every week and playing in front of thousands of fans, you know, seeing myself on TV. My parents get to see me on TV. That's, that's pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. I still love doing that. All right. I enjoy it to the, to, 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 to the fullest. But what I think you'll take more of is uh, if I tell you about my path to get here, because um, interestingly enough, uh, I never wanted to become a professional football player when I was in high school. It was never a thought of mine at all. Um, actually, what I thought I was going to become was a professional basketball player. I was certain that I was going to go to the NBA. I was certain I was going to dunk on everybody and uh, that I was going to get a scholarship. I was going to be phenomenal. But, you know, football was never in my goal set. So I'll start off like this. Who here has any idea what they want to do when they, when they leave school? Any idea whatsoever? Right, hands up. All right, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Who here knows exactly what they want to do? Exactly what they want to do. All right? Now, who here knows exactly how to get there? Much less than, see all you guys, I, see I hate you guys in high school. You guys all knew what you wanted to do and I had no idea, right? I hate you guys in high school. Um, but but uh, for me, like I said, um, I want to become a, you know, NBA basketball player. That's, that's what I was set on doing. Um, those, that, that goal, I guess, was not in the, uh, wasn't in the cards for me. I like to think it's because I just went undiscovered, not that I couldn't have done it. Right? I think I, you know, anyone here who, who plays basketball and, you know, think they're really good, you guys can see me in the gym after this, uh, if in the speech, I'm gonna do some shooting, uh, some shooting clinics for you guys. Um, but, uh, what I, what I wanted to do after I realized that I wasn't going to the NBA was I wanted to become a doctor. You know, I, I always loved the human body and, 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 and I knew that, you know what, if I become a doctor, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna really excel it and, and I'm gonna love it. Alright? So, I had to get a, come up with a plan. So how, how, how was I going to become a doctor? I was going to get a scholarship to university, all right, because I knew that um, my parents couldn't afford to send me to university, so I knew that I had to get a scholarship to go to university, all right? So I'm going to start now. Or, or, well, I started getting calls from uh, different universities who wanted me to play football for them, all right? And I was, I mean, Mr. Russell here knows that uh, I was – a pretty good football player in high school, Mr. Russell. I was all right. Yeah, I was all right. <laughs> uh, and so I was going to use the football to get me to university. All right? So unfortunately for me, when I was in high school, I might not have been the most 
focused student. I mean, I never got in trouble or anything like that, you know, but, you know, I always did just enough, you know, I always did just enough that no one could really get mad at me, you know, because I made sure I did all my work, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But, for example, all right, how many people uh, have been late this year to class? All right. If you add up all the hands in here, that's probably half as much as I was late in my years, my final year here at, uh, at North Toronto. I, was, I, did, I did just enough to get by, all right? And as I'm doing that, um, one of my teachers, uh, who's no longer here, uh, our fan tour, Mr. you guys remember Mr. Tour? Mr. Tour brought me, uh, brought me to his office, I think it was uh, when I was in grade 11, and uh, said to me, okay, Ryan, what are you doing? And I said, what do you mean what am I doing? You asked me to come to your, your, your office after, after class. I'm here. And uh, he says, no, what are you doing? Where do you want to be in life? All right. And I said, well, you know, I want to get a scholarship to go to university, and, and I want to go, go do med school and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he was like, you think that doing just enough is going to get you a scholarship down to the States? Think about how many athletes are in Toronto right now that are doing just enough, that are, that are probably excelling at their school. All right? Think of how many athletes are just in Toronto. And now think about in Canada. And now think about the fact that there's tons of those athletes in the States. All right? Where do you want to be in life? Look at the path you're on right now. You're doing just enough. Is, is, is that going to get you to where you want to be? I didn't have an answer for him because I knew the answer. I wasn't doing enough. The pathway that I was heading down wasn't, wasn't the right pathway. All right? So he said, okay, you're not heading on the right path. Change your path. Changing your path will change your destiny. All right? That's what I want. That's that's much I want to tell you guys today. Decisions shape your destiny. All right. So I made a decision from that point. I said, you know what? I'm gonna get my act together. I'm gonna focus in school. I'm gonna make sure I, I, I get all my grades up. I'm gonna you know try to become a, a beast on the football field, and I'm gonna try to excel and be better than everyone else that I can think of. All right. So I turn everything around. My school is going great. You know, uh, my grade 12 year. I'm having a great year. You know, our team's winning. We're, we're going really well. I'm getting a lot of, you know, uh, my, my, my name's in paper every once in a while. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. And then, bang, I tore my hamstring. Okay. So uh, I tear my hamstring, and now I have a decision to make. Um, how badly do I want to get this scholarship? Do I want to just say, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll call it quits now, and I'll go to a, a Canadian university, take out a loan, something like that? Or do I come back for, well, what, what's known then as a, as a victory lap? Um, and do I face the stigma that comes with that? Because I know, I'm not sure what it is now, but I know back when I was in high school, um, there was always a stigma to coming back for a fifth year. People always thought, well, he wasn't smart enough or all that kind of stuff. And all that, those, those kind of stigmas really, really bothered me. So I was faced with a decision. What am I going to decide to do? Am I going to face the stigma just to get to where I want to be? Or... Or am I just going to give it up? So I decided to come back for the fifth year. All right? Probably one of the good decisions. Because I come back for the fifth year. You know, I'm having a great year, getting even more coverage. I'm starting to get some, some calls from, from, from some universities in the States. Phenomenal for me. So I figure if we make it to the Metro Bowl, you guys know what the Metro Bowl is? Yeah? If, if we make it to the Metro Bowl, there'll be some scouts there. The scouts will see me play. I'll finally get a chance to get a scholarship. Right? That seems to make sense. We lose in the semifinals to Northern. Boo. Can't stand that school. Northern. So we lose in the semifinals to Northern. And uh, I remember this day because I remember the old locker room after that game. Everyone had left, and I was just sitting down there by myself in the locker room at my locker thinking that all my dreams were gone. I remember I was in tears because I'm thinking I wanted to do this for, for how long? And now I'm not going to get my shot. I'm not going to get any exposure. So I'm sitting down there in tears. Faced with another decision. All right? What do I decide to do now? Do I accept that? Do I accept that obstacle? Or do I try to persevere and go through it? Find a different way to get to where I want to be. All right? My decision. I'm going to find a different way to, to get to where I want to be. So... I make a, uh, a highlight tape of all, all the games I played at, at North Toronto. 
all, the high, all every, every single game, I went through it, sat down, because I didn't have anyone do it for me, so I went through and I, and, and I did it myself, made my own highlight tape, all right? I trained in, in the wintertime, and then I went to what's known as a combine, which basically, which basically is uh, all the athletes that are looking to go forward in sports for, for a football combine, all right? They, 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 they go to this, basically, it's a gathering of athletes, and then there's some coaches there who are going to look and see if they want certain players that are performing well, all right? So I, so I go there, face that competition, I do well. I give out my highlight tape. The next day, I got two calls from universities, Penn State and UNH, University of New Hampshire. And so I chose to go to UNH because I wanted to get my education. That decision was also shaped by North Toronto. I knew that I wanted to make sure I got my academics in order, so I went to North Toronto. I mean, I mean so, so I went to uh, New, New Hampshire. So I'm excited now, all right? I've just, just left high school, all right? I was a star, all right? High school star. You know, I'm, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to live the, you know, the remember the Titans dream, you know, all those, all those big football movies that you guys see. We are Marshall. Ah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, gonna to be standing in front of all these fans. It's going to be phenomenal. I'm going to love it. I'm going to start down as a rookie. I'm going to be a beast. And I get down there, and what happens? I ride the bench. Okay. I'm thinking, okay, all right. It's, not, it's, 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 it's okay. All right, it happens. Sometimes, and a lot of times, rookies, when they go down there in their first year, they ride the bench. Now, granted, they had already, they, they switched me from a position that I played to a different position that I'd never played in my life. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe they just want to give me a chance to, you know, learn the position and get better at it, and then they're going to play me. Okay, yeah, all right. I'll be good. I'll be good. Okay. My second year, rode the bench the entire, I got really good at warming the bench, really good. Kept it really nice and warm, clean for everyone who was coming off. Uh, got them water. It was really refreshing. Uh, I made sure the water was cold. Um, but, uh, again, yeah, I rode the bench. Okay? Getting really frustrated now. But there's hope, because in my third year, all the vets were graduating. All right? Now we've got some rookies coming in. You know, the vets are gone. I'm going to get my shot. All right? And when, when, when I get my shot, I'm going to make sure I kill it when I get my shot. They bring in this... Uh, DB, I, I play DB, and they bring in this DB who was, I guess, a stud in high school, and they give this DB my starting spot. Okay. The frustration's growing, all right? I'm at the end of my third season, end of my third season there, and by now, my grades are starting to drop because I'm putting my everything into football, so I'm losing out on my, on my grades. And on top of that, I'm not even playing. So I'm losing out on both ends. So I'm sitting down thinking after this third, this third season, thinking, what do I really want to do? So I talked to my parents, and I was ready to come home. That was it. I was done with football. I was done with it. I was like, football's not getting me anywhere. And when, what's even worse is it's losing out or it making me lose out on my goal to really become a doctor. Football is the worst thing that's happened to me. All right, so there's my decision. Do I quit and come home and try to salvage something or do I try to stick it out? Decision. Okay? So my decision was I'm just going to stick it out. I'm going to stop worrying about the consequences of a play. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to stop getting frustrated all the time. I'm just going to go out there and, and, I'm, and I'm just going to play. I'm just going to say, forget it. I'm just going to go out there and play. I go out there. I beat out that DB. The next year, I start, and I start the next two years of college. All right, so now I'm the starter, and now I'm finally living that life. I'm finally going to the schools. You know, did you guys ever see the movie We Are Marshall? You ever see that? Yeah, you know how, like, you know, in the movie they said that, we are, and then Marshall. Did you ever see that? I finally got a chance to live that. We actually played Marshall and sitting and, and playing in, in that game because it was a really close game, and the fans are going crazy. I, I stopped for a second. I'm like, you know what? That was the best decision I ever made to stay. A problem? It's not a problem. It's inspiration to be better. All right. So within that, while I'm down there, you know, trying to trying to do my best, getting my, my, my school together, getting my, my, my sports up, apparently I, 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 I caught the eye of some people in Canada in the CFL because I started getting some phone calls and I actually got a, an email from a guy at TSN. I remember this like it was yesterday because I felt really stupid after because, uh, I guess what happens is what they do is in the CFL, they draft you in your fourth year out of, out of high school, wherever you are. 
All right. So I didn't really know that. I thought that they were drafting me or someone had declared me eligible for the draft. Right. And so this guy sends me an email. You know what, Ryan, uh, we need some game footage from you because we're going to we, we think you're going to go pretty high in the draft. And I was like, draft, draft for what? I, I'm, did, I, did I declare for a draft? And I, and I remember responding and saying to him, uh, you know what? I'd like to decline my offer to be in the draft. I want to go and finish my – and, you know, this guy actually laughed at me because it wasn't that they said that I had to leave school, but it was just that, that they were going to draft my rights for when I graduate. Um, and so the option there was do I leave school and go play professional football right now or do I stay and finish my degree? All right? Stay and finish my degree. In that year, I became an academic all-conference. All right? Stuff like that looks really good on a med school application. That's what, I was, that's what I was glad about. So lucky for me, I stayed there. And then, the, and then the option again came out when I was graduating. All right, I'm in a pretty good shape to go to med school now. Do I just go to med school? Or do I go do this football thing? All right, I don't want to lose out of my opportunity to go to med school. That's really what I always wanted to do. But how many people get a chance to play professional football in their life? I want to say this, the study said it was about, what, 2% of people in all of North America are professional athletes, 2%. So I took that option. I said, you know what, I know I'm, I might be taking someone at, at risk here, but I'm going to take that, take that chance. So I go down to uh, Hamilton, and I end up being in the, the hospital. Uh, I'm doing an internship right now at McMaster um, hospital and McMaster is a school that I want to go to for med school. So that ended up working out really well for me. While I'm at McMaster, I meet this doctor who does some work in Guyana, Guyana, the country that I was born in, as uh, Mr. Hood said. So now I have an opportunity now to help this doctor with a project. So he mentioned to me that he's doing a project that will let, well, will, was looking to raise funds to open up a pediatric ward in my home country. Now, if I'm not sure if you guys know much about Guyana, Guyana's an, an, an impoverished nation. It, it was when I was there, it was when I left, and it still is. The healthcare system back there is probably about mm, 20, maybe 30 years behind what it's like, like up here. So whatever you think, you know, whenever you go to the hospital and you have to wait really long and you're really, really annoyed, I promise you it's 30 times worse in Guyana. All right? So, lucky me, I'm in a position now where I was able to actually give back, all right? And in my opinion, when you get blessed to be in a position where you have any sort of, any sort of public recognition, you know, or we're in a position that you're a professional athlete, I think it's, it's, not, only, it's not only your an option, it's not only a blessing, but it's your duty to give back, all right? So now I'm part of a, a charity organization that's raising funds to open up a pediatric ward, which will actually open up in this coming March. So I'm not just affecting my own life, I'm able to affect the lives of others. All right, I'm giving back. And on top of that, I was able to start my own um, organization, uh, GTA Youth Athletics, which runs you know, football camps all around the GTA, just to give back again. I'm getting a chance to give back, impart some knowledge, impart some football knowledge, because I know there's a lot of kids. When I was coming out, I, I never had that kind of stuff, so that's the reason why I did that. So I'm looking back at all my decisions. All right, where am I now? I'm part of a huge charity. I'm on my way to med school because I'm in the hospital that I want to go to the med school in. Um, I play professional football. I go out and, like I said, perform in front of thousands of fans every day. Um, and so... I think about it. All that stuff wouldn't have happened. My life wouldn't be the way it is right now if <laughs> my life wouldn't be the way it is right now if I decided to not take that option to go to play professional football. If I decided to to leave after my my third season. Decision decision shapes destiny. I didn't get a chance. I wouldn't get a chance to do this if I didn't decide to go to UNH. All that wouldn't have happened if I didn't decide to make that, that highlight tape. And all that wouldn't have happened if I didn't decide to get my act together. Again, decision shapes destiny. So what I want to tell you guys right now is if you guys have a goal, those of you guys who know where you want to be, where you want to go, how to get there, get there. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't. Don't let any problem arise in front of you that you feel like 
it, that it's too big because every problem is overcomable. There's, there's a reason for those problems and it's only going to make you better. Right? Don't let anyone tell you you can't do anything you can't, that, don't, don't let anyone tell you you can't do something that you want to do because you can. Just don't let anything stop you. All right? And so now, I'll open up the floor to any sort of questions about my, uh, you know, career or anything. Any you guys, any questions you guys want to ask? Uh, floor is yours. Usually one of the questions I get a lot is uh, probably what's one of the, the highlights of my, of my football career. And so I always tell the same story. Uh, when I was in high school here, I used to love watching uh, Doug Flutie play for the Toronto Argonauts. And I used to go to Skydome. I used to sit down. I used to watch the stadium, you know, watch the games and everything like that. I used to get really, really excited every time I get a chance to watch the game. And then in my first year, we had, we had a chance to actually play Toronto in Toronto. That's probably the highlight of my career would be the first game walking out onto the field after we got off the bus, walking out onto the, uh, the Skydome uh, floor, the grass, and looking up and being like, wow, I used to be up there watching, and now I'm down here, and I get a chance to play in front of my family, all my friends, all that kind of stuff. That's probably one of the biggest highlights of my career there. Uh, but, yeah, all right, so I'm going to open the floor to any, any, any sort of questions. Yep. Who's your favorite basketball player? My favorite basketball player? When I was in high school, my favorite ball player was Baron Davis. Baron Davis was my favorite ball player. And then I became a Kobe fan. I don't know if you guys are LeBron fans out there. You are wrong. <laughs> uh, but I was, a, I, was, I was a huge Baron Davis fan. And um, actually, when, when he was here, I was a big Vince Carter fan. So those are my favorite basketball players. Uh, any other questions? My favorite football player. You know what? I was a huge, not was, I still am, huge fan of Ed Reed. I love the way Ed Reed plays. Familiar with Ed Reed at all? Ed Reed? Ed Reed played for the Ravens, and he's a safety, and he's one of the, the best cover safeties, one of the hardest hitters. He's just a phenomenal player. He makes, he makes things happen. And so uh, I love watching him play. He's, he, he's, he's an exciting person to watch play. Any other questions? Uh, the jump is huge, uh, because think about it. When you're in high school and you go to university, it's all the stars from those high schools that are playing in university, right? So where you're a superstar, when you, when you go to university, you're, you're competing against all superstars, right? Now think about the difference between Canadian ball and when you go down and play American ball is that down there they eat, sleep, and breathe football, right? And so the way we are about hockey is the way they are about football. So the jump was huge. Uh, I, I remember going there my first, the first day when I was going into camp, and uh, I saw this enormous house of a man, and he was like, I want to see, he was about like six, 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 probably like 260, and uh, he was a defensive lineman, but I could have sworn he was a receiver, and I was like, I'm going to have to guard that guy. He's going to run straight through my face, and I'm going to leave. Um, because he was huge. But, but, I mean, the skill level's a huge jump, um, but it's just something that you have to get used to, you know, and that's what it is. Once you, once you get used to the speed of the game and the skill level, then you'll be able to play at that level. It's just initially it's a little bit daunting and a little bit, you know, intimidating, but that's just something that you have to get through, and then, you know, you'll be fine after. Uh, that's probably one of the tougher things to do. And I think, I think more so than anything else, that's what university teaches you. It teaches you how to, how to get things done. You know, not so much the material, but I mean, it teaches you how to balance things, how to, how to organize yourself. And so for me, I spent a lot of time in the library. Uh, there'll be a lot of days where I'd wake up, you know, for morning practice, go to class, go to afternoon practice, go to the library, you know, stuff like that. And that, and that'd be my day. Um, now, I still manage to find some ways of going out and enjoying myself. I'm still a regular human being. But, uh, you know, there was a lot of sacrifice that you had, that you had to do. You had to, uh, if, if you want to get a goal and you want to, you know, get somewhere where you want to be, you got to sacrifice some stuff. And I had to sacrifice a lot of time going out. And there were many Friday nights, Saturday nights that I spent not out with my friends, but in the library studying for an exam. 
Um, so it was, it, it was a lot of sacrifice. Yep. I just want to know, if, do you think if you went to a Canadian university, you would be in the same place you are now? Or do you think the American university like, really helped you with that? Uh, it definitely really helps. I mean, it's very possible to have gone to a Canadian university. And, I mean, obviously there are a lot of guys in the CFL who went to Canadian university. Uh, but it definitely really helped because they came and found me. Whenever you go to a Canadian, a, 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 hello, an American university for football, because the coaching, you know, because they're, they're, they're so huge on, on football down there, you know, it raises your skill level a lot because you're playing against really, really, really good competition. And so, uh, it makes a difference in the player that I am today uh, than if I had gone to a Canadian university. Now, I'm not sure what it would have been like. I can't tell you. I mean, I wish I knew, but um, I can't tell you exactly what it would have been like, but I know that definitely going down to the States was a, uh, was a, um, a huge decision and probably one of the better ones for myself. Plus, they pay for school, so I don't have a loan. That's awesome. Yep. How much time do I spend in the gym? Let's see. Uh, during the season, I don't know. We only li- I mean, because the season is very long and it's the game is really physical. We probably spend maybe like four times a week, three times a week. Uh, we probably spend two hours every time we're in the gym. But in the off season, when we're training for the season, it's at least six days a week. Not necessarily lifting every day, but we're doing stuff, doing something active. If we're not working on our strength and working on our flexibility, if we're not working on our flexibility, we're working on our conditioning. You know, in the off-season training, it's rigorous, very, very rigorous. Yep. Uh, who's the toughest receiver you ever co- you ever had to cover? The toughest receiver I ever had to cover. Oh. Um. You know what? There's a guy on my team who's probably the toughest receiver I had to cover. Covering him in practice is um, a real pain. Uh, Chris Williams. He is probably one of the fastest players. Not one of. He's the fastest person I've ever s- played against. He's got great hands. He's really quick. Christian was probably one of the fastest guys I've ever had to cover. Um, I want to say, actually, when I was in the States, um, they had this guy named Aaron Johnson, and uh, he was like 6'3", uh, really long arms, could jump out the building, and was fast. And so that was probably one of the fastest guys I ever had to cover. Uh, and that was no fun, not even the slightest. Yep. Um, I got one look to uh, Lehigh. That's Lehigh University in the States. And, uh, you know, the in- interest didn't really seem that strong. They offered me a little bit, uh, but it wasn't enough. Um, but I think, not I think, what, what, what makes a huge difference in getting a scholarship offer is game film. And if you don't have any game film, which I didn't have for basketball, then, you know, they don't give you an offer because what they want to do is they want to see the person that's actually playing rather than just hearing about it in the paper and they want to see the competition you're playing against. So I got one scholarship offer for, uh, for basketball, but again, I like to believe that that's just because no one saw me play, you know. That's... All right. Go ahead. My favorite hockey player? Uh, Mr. Russell is my favorite hockey player. Next question. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. My opinion is your lockout. Uh, my opinion is that leaves more space on TSN for basketball highlights. That's that's my opinion on the NHL lockout. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, they they were supportive of whatever sport I wanted to play. Uh, so whether I chose football or basketball really wasn't my, – my dad actually wanted me to stick around for basketball a lot because uh, he thought I was better at basketball. My mom probably wanted me to play basketball too because there was less chance that I'd get knocked out by someone's heavy helmet. And, uh, but when I decided to play football instead of basketball, they were, they were, they were pretty supportive. Uh, the only thing they weren't supportive of is when I said that I wanted to leave university and come back to Canada. They were not supportive of that, that's for sure. Yep. I moved to Canada when I was, uh, I want to say, and it was 94. I was about seven and a half. I was eight years old or so when I moved to Canada. So I was still pretty young. Um, but, you know, young guy. Spell me.
the table and then use them and then kick it to the curb when the time is up and there's not like really nothing. No, that didn't uh, that didn't that didn't that didn't factor in. That's a that's that's that that and that's an interesting perspective, but that didn't factor in. At the time, what I was thinking was if I go to American University, I get to go to school for free. That's it. I mean uh also I also I like I said, I wanted to, you know, live that life that I saw in all the movies. I wanted to be part of the you know, remember the Titans and all those kind of big movies. I, I wanted to live that and I got to go to school for free, so I was like, Well, I'm gonna try to get there. Um and then what? Well, once, once I, once I graduated university, like I said, I had no intention of playing professional football. I thought I was just going to graduate university and then go to med school. Um, so what they want to do with me after university, I could care less now. Yes. Um, I think that, uh, I think now I enjoy the, uh, the CFL game better than I do enjoy the NFL game. That, that's a fact. I, I enjoy the CFL game. It's a lot more fun, but, uh, I think anyone wants to, anyone, anyone in the CFL, you know, wants to play in the NFL at some point. When I was coming out of university, actually, uh, I went on a couple uh, different tryouts to, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs and the, uh, who was it? The Vikings, actually. I was there for a couple weeks, with both teams, um, but it didn't work out. But anyone would say that they want to play in the NFL because it's just such, such a, such a grander scale, you know, so. But I, but I, but I love the CFL game. Don't hate me, Mr. Russell. All right. Um, yep. Um, well, med school is still that option, right? I mean, and, and, and the stuff I'm doing right now in McMaster Hospital and the stuff I'm doing right now with, you know, the charity that I'm doing, all that stuff helps you when you apply to med school. And so uh, that, that, that goal has never wavered from my sight, and it's something that, I, that I'm going to want to do and I'm going to do when I'm, when I'm done with football, for sure. Uh, Mr. Russell. Just a point of information for the first match to the Brian Augusta basketball scholarship. Unquestionably, it could have. We didn't have any, we didn't film our games then. Uh, I've been in the basketball camp for 40 years and I've seen NBA players. And uh, if we, we had game film on, believe me, Brian could have played you as a college Thank you, Mr. Russell. I paid him to say that, and I thank you. It worked out well. Go ahead. Do you swim better or skate better? Um, let's see. Well, when I skate, there's not an option that I might drown and die. So I'm going to go with skating. I skate better. I avoid water like the plague unless I have to shower. Um, so <laughs> I escaped better. It's been, what, what, what Mr. Russell's trying to get at is when I was in North Toronto, uh, I was, you know, wa- I want to say water was like my kryptonite. I was just crippled by water. I remember uh, Mr. Russell having quite a good laugh at my swimming classes. We're going to move on from that topic, however. <laughs> yeah. Do I still dunk? Yeah, I dunk. I'll dunk in these. Right here, in these jeans. Don't let the jacket and the shoes fool you. I'll dunk on you. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. On Ovechkin moving to the AHL, I'm really upset by it. Very. Uh, what's your opinion on it? Curious. It, he does, doesn't he? He's got to feed his kids, right? You know, he's got he's to do it. Had any concussions? I had one, and interestingly enough, it was by my own teammate. Um, we were both uh, the balls in the air, and we were both coming like this. Didn't see each other. Uh, head head on collision in the air. Um, having a concussion is not fun. No, no. Um, it's funny when you saw the film, but it wasn't fun when it happened. Um, yes, sir, in the back. <laughs> Um, you know what? I always want to do pediatrics. I always did. Um, I'm a fan of kids. I love coming and talking to kids. I love, I love kids in general. That's part of the reason why I, why I run uh, the, the, the football camps is because I love kids. And, you know, I'm a big kid myself. I interact better with kids than I do adults. So uh, pedi- pediatrics is what I wanted to head into. Um, but a lot of doctors have told me that uh, when you start med school, 
you end up, by the time you finish med school, your goals are a lot different from when you actually started. So you never know what you're going to end up in. But I did want to do pediatrics when I started. Any other questions? Oh, yep. Did I put the team on my back, Mr. Russell? Did I ever put the team on my back? I, I, I think there's no putting a team on your back. I think we all had pretty good teams, and everyone has, has their role. And uh, it was my job to do certain things, and so I did my job, and everyone else did theirs, and that's why we won. That's why I like to play it out in my head. Um, but if Mr. Russell wants to say put a team on my back, well, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight him, you know. Yep. I was a, uh, I mean, I played point guard. Most of the time, but I mean, I was more or less of a shooting guard, small forward kind of thing. But I played point guard because my handles are on point, you know. Yep. Before that, um, I played, I was a receiver and a running back here in Canada. So I was on offense, uh, probably because I loved the glory that offense got. Um, they're the guys scoring touchdowns. And that's probably the most fun thing to do in football. But uh, when I got to there, they switched me to a cornerback, which I'd never played, and it took me quite a while to pick up. Probably still picking up right now. Um, any other questions? Yes? How do you, if, if you can recall going back to your high school years, how did, how did you stay focused and how did you stay motivated when you had all those problems, when you were faced with, with your obstacles? Well, that's a good question because... Uh, you know, what it was to me was when I, when I set a goal for myself, I'm determined to get it. And so staying focused is just a matter of realizing where you want to end up and looking at whether you're going to get there in, in, in the way you're going. So if I want my grades to be a certain level at the end of the year, do I need to do really good on this exam? Which means do I need to stay in instead of going out on Friday night? You know, there's every one of these little decisions – that you guys are making right now, all, all, all the decisions that, that, that direct your destiny, those start from now, you know, because not doing all your, not, not finishing your homework, not studying enough for this test, all those grades and stuff, stuff like that adds up. Um, so for me, it was a matter of realizing where I wanted to go and where I wanted to be and not accepting anything else as my end path. So uh, it was just my staying focused on my goal was what kept me motivated. And uh, having teachers give me lectures on a regular basis, I appreciated that. Uh, yeah. Did you ever think back and wish you had made a different decision? Um, yeah, I mean, when I look back, sometimes I think about what if I had gotten some basketball game film and went to play basketball. You know, uh, I tried doing that one time. Um, I asked my dad to uh, come videotape some games, and my dad's not the most technologically savvy person. And so a lot of my game films was of the ceiling while he was watching the game like this. Um, and so, you know, I, I look back and think, what if my dad knew how to operate a camera? Maybe I'd be somewhere else. You know? It'd be nice. But um, I think back on that, and then I think, you know what, where else do I want to end up rather than where I am right now? Right? I'm, I'm, I'm in a position to, you know, execute a goal that I've planned since I was way back in high school, right? So I think about what could have happened, but I'm also pretty satisfied where I am right now. So um, I try not to focus on the uh, what ifs anymore. Anything else? Anyone? There we go. Right. <laughs> Rapper. Uh, I listen to classical music. Um, no, uh, I, I don't. I'm, I don't know. I don't have a favorite. I like to uh, mix it up. How about that? I like to mix it up. Who's your favorite rapper? I don't think it was 
All right. I like country music. Who knows? You know. Britney Spears. She's my favorite rapper. I love her. All right. <laughs> Round of applause. All right. I think that's it. Unless there's any other questions. All right. Appreciate your time, guys. Really cool.